Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and we just walked out of the back of the shop, and, uh, supposedly somebody left something for us around back, and we're supposed to go and- Oh. Oh. Well, it looks like a Chevy from here, but something tells me it's a little bit longer than a standard- Oh. Oh, my God. Um... This, if you're not already aware, is a brand new truck from Risky. Yes, that Risky, which we haven't seen in the modding community for a little bit of a while now, but it's super exciting to see Risky dropping a brand new mod. And not only is this Chevy Silverado a six-door, but it is also on massive axles, massive tires, is fully console-friendly, and has a fully modeled Detroit diesel under the hood. So without any more rambling on, let's go ahead and find Fire this thing up, show y'all what it sounds like, show y'all under the hood, and of course, take you through all of the customization options. So let's go ahead and turn the key and see what this thing sounds like. Dude, that sounds absolutely beastly. Let's pop the hood now so y'all can take a look at this Detroit Diesel. Look at that. That is absolutely wild. The detail that has gone into this truck is absolutely next level. And the detail does not stop in the engine bay. Check this out. If you go underneath the truck, there's even more detail to be seen under there. Look at all of this. The lines are modeled. The fuel system is modeled. Look at the freaking, oh my god, the piping is all there. The couplers are all there. The axles, the suspension, the drive shafts, the fuel tanks, which by the way, are freaking huge. Everything is there. Everything is fully modeled. Everything is there. And not only is it there, but it's all in the places where you would expect it to be, and it all functions the way you would expect it to function. So, let's go ahead and go inside the garage and take y'all through the customization options, then we'll take this thing out for a drive. Alright, so let's see. Engines-wise, we've got the vanilla spec stock Detroit DD13, we've got the tuned spec, and we have the ultimate spec. The ultimate spec is going to be your OP spec, but as you can see, you have a vanilla uh, spec, you have kind of a mid-range spec, and then you have the OP spec, which you can, again, spec this thing to however you want it to drive. Now, gearbox-wise, you have the stock, the re-geared, and the bulletproof, and again, you can set it up for any type of playstyle that you want. Suspension-wise, you get one option, which you really don't need any other option for suspension. Your suspension is pretty much sorted. Tires-wise, they are all 54s, but you've got a huge selection. You've got boggers, you've got thornbirds, you've got, let's see, uh, military XZLs, you've got tractor tires, you've got pitbull rockers, creepy crawlers, let's see, Diffuse tires, you've got Puppy Master's Bug tires, you've got Super Swampers, Trepidors, let's see, what else? Goodyear Super Terras, which are freaking wild. You got BFG ATs, you got BFG KM3s, Risky's Outer Co Boggers, uh, Scrambler ATs, and B Gamers Tractor Tires. So, Massive list, honestly. Absolutely massive list of tires. Then, you have a couple of different winch options. You have the OP spec, which we have on right now. You have the, uh, the kind of mid-range spec, and you have the vanilla spec. Then, spare wheel-wise, you have the one for the truggy cage, the one for the roof rack, actually the two for the roof rack, and you also have the one in the bed, which I've decided to run. Now, the roof rack, you could run two more spares up there if you really wanted to. I'm gonna run it as just the roof rack with the light bar, but again, that's completely and entirely up to to you. Now, you have a standard bed, you have a wide body bed, and then you also have a flat bed option and a truggy cage. So, this can essentially be optioned out into whatever you want, whether you want a six-door truggy that you can go rock crawling with all of your friends in, or a flat bed, or a essentially like a dually pickup bed, or a standard pickup bed, all of those options are on the table for you. Then, you also have a wide body kit for the front that you can apply as well. You have a, uh, let's see, a ball hitch, which you can put on the back then you have a custom roll cage that you can do which i believe goes inside the truck and then you also have a toolbox that you can throw in the back as well now, exhaust-wise, you have a couple of different options, actually uh, quite a few, uh, but the coolest thing is if you want tall stacks, you can do that, but if you want short stacks, you can do that as well. It all comes down to whether you want the stacks in black or chrome, and whether you want them tall or short. You also have a diamond option here, which is actually really, really neat. I'm glad that Risky did that. Then, you actually could do a roof rack toolbox, which I really dig. I'm going to actually go ahead and put that up there. Then you have a roof-mounted light bar, which we have the rack-mounted 
mounted light bar, not the roof mounted light bar, but you don't need the rack in order to run the light bar, which is really, really nice. Then you could actually do some Grizzly side stickers if you want to do um, any kind of custom stickers on the truck. You have a couple of different uh, hood options, and the reason why you have a couple of different hood options is because uh, this hood is open and closable, obviously, as y'all saw earlier, and in order to kind of keep the color changeability um, and the functionality, Risky needed to put in a couple of different hoods. So, let's see, you also have some custom plates that you could put on the back, or the one that I've gone for, which is the custom IX plate. Now, front bumper-wise, I love the massive pre-runner bumper, but you can really do any one of these bumper options or bumper styles. I love this one, too, that's got a built-in winch, custom tow hooks, custom light pods, pretty much whatever you need, it's all there. This is also another uh, tube-style bumper that is going to be be really good if you're doing a rock crawler style build. Now, wheels wise, you've got quite a few options right here. You've got a wheel from Pog. You've also got some AEV style wheels. You've got these decoy wheels. You've got these, what are these? Steel rotor wheels. You've got a, let's see, a set of method wheels and a set of, let's see, Coda off road wheels. Now, let's see. Full color selection, by the way, and I mean massive, absolutely massive color selection, including camo paint jobs, are available for this truck. So, whatever direction you want to go with your build, you can do it. And, if you want an entire selection of um, stickers... You have that as well. Like, literally, the entire selection of in-game stickers is available to you on this truck, which I freaking love. Now, without any further ado, let's take this thing out into the mud and see what it's like to drive. Firing it up once more. It does take a minute to get fired up, but, I mean, I'm not really too worried about that. Dude, the rear steer on this thing is actually pretty active. I mean, it's got a good amount of uh, of steering angle to it, and if you go full, like, full beans on the steering, it will bring the back end around very, very, very quickly. Very quickly and very swiftly. So, we're out here on West Georgia Mud Park today, and I'm gonna actually make my way out to the main mud pit before we go to some of the other areas on the map. We are definitely also gonna hit the hill climb, because I feel like this map does a really good job of bringing a bunch of different types of obstacles into one map. So let's actually go to the interior view now so y'all can see what that looks like. And as you can see, it is a very realistic uh, Chevy Silverado interior from this particular generation of Chevy Silverado, even down to the tow haul button on the shifter. God, that Detroit is screaming though. Absolutely screaming with all the RPMs. Good God. See the cup holders, all the seats, like all three rows of seats, by the way, are fully modeled in here. That is so sick. You know what we got to do now that we're out here, right? We got to hit this mud pit and then hit the jump and see if this thing can keep the momentum. Let's go. Full set. Oh, God. Goes down to first. It's not bad. We're not stuck, but we did lose quite a bit of momentum there. Oh, easy, easy. There we go. High range. Not bad. Not a ton of air, obviously, but not bad. See through the shallow stuff, this thing keeps ripping. Absolute. Oh my god! All the light! Okay, we don't need the lights on right now, and I'm just mind boggled that the lights are that bright. All right, let's see how this thing does in the mud. Okay, all wheel drive and diff lock are always on, which makes sense. Um, this mud is a little bit more gnarly, it's a little bit deeper, it's not quite as shallow as the mud that we hit at first, but this thing did a really good job of making its way through it. Now, admittedly, we did that in low plus, but still, I mean, low plus isn't really, that's not a bad thing. You would usually be in a gear like that anyway, in mud like that, unless you were in a fully built mud truck that had like, you know, 1500 horsepower and nitrous and could just beans it through everything. Easy. Whoa! The back end of this thing will get pretty loose if you don't pay attention to what you're doing with that rear steer. I will tell you that. This thing is like... It is super active, and it will slide around on you if you're not careful, but it actually makes it a lot more engaging to drive. Look at that. It can almost, like, crab walk in a slide. It's so wild. All right, let's make our way up this little hill real quick. I love the way the suspension is set up. It actually does little jumps really, really well. Does a really good job of handling them. Now, we're going to go over to the big hill climb that y'all all know, that y'all are all familiar with, and I think this thing is going to absolutely just knock it out of the park. I think it's going to just essentially 
uh, essentially eat that hill climb for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It really is. God. I'm actually also really happy that Risky went for a Detroit Diesel because a lot of people in SnowRunner, when they're building these mod trucks, they'll go for like a Duramax or a Cummins or a Power Stroke, and there's nothing wrong with any of those engines, but it's really cool to see some variety with the Detroit Diesel. Oh, dude, full beans up the hill. What are you even... Oh, my God. And, like, scrambled up some of the rocks at the end. Oh! I tried to make it do a donut. It didn't like it. <laughs> It didn't, it didn't like it. I took it to the donut shop and it said, I don't want donuts this morning. Thank you. I'm good. Can we not be upside down? Please and thank you. Oh, we're almost not upside down anymore. Yay. Oh, oh, uh-oh. Oh, come on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Can we not? Please? There we go. Just had to get the right witch point, and then we were fine. All right, now let's go ahead and just full beans it down this mountain and head into the mud pit across from the long, uh, it's like essentially the long, like, mud lane. We're not going into that, but we are going into the little, like, miniature mud park across from that because that one has some really good jumps. I love how it has just a standard car horn, too. Like, it's not some crazy train horn. It's not, like, you know, a massive air horn. It's just, like... Just, like, out of my way. Yes, I, too, need to get through the Taco Bell drive through What are you doing? <laughs> All right, let's sneak through the trees. Not really sneaking much of anywhere in this thing, but... It's like you get through the tree line, and it's like, Ha-ha, I was there all along. Aren't you surprised? Ow! That hurt. That, that was, oh, that, that was pain. That was proper pain. Oh, low plus is not bad in here. This mud's pretty nasty, though. I'll definitely give it that. I will definitely give it that because this mud is, this is kind of on the level that it would slow down even a fully built, fully prepped mud truck. And y'all have seen that happen before on this channel. So for this thing to just like throw itself in low plus and just lumber through there, that's pretty dang impressive. And yoink, makes itself right out the other side. And oh, dude, I love how you can whip it back around uh, like in high range using the rear steer. Look at that. Oh, okay. Thing's putting in mad work right now. I I am all about this thing. I am absolutely all about this thing. Yeet! Oh, I love this truck. I love it so much. And now, after spending an absolutely gorgeous day with this truck out here on West Georgia Mud Park, I can very, very, very clearly say that it is one of my favorite rigs that I have seen lately. So, hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see y'all next time.